Richard Burton. Yes. Well, um, he was amazing actually. We were, we were, we, were um, we had it, I mean, this wouldn't have happened now, but we basically we had John Hurt to do the movie. I, I just went up to John Hurt at a, at a, at a BAFTA celebration and said, listen, um, I'm, I'm about to make 1984, and if you're not in it, I'm not going to make it. And he said, I'll do it. So we, and he was the perfect Winston Smith. We then had a few problems with finding O'Brien, who was the other main major, made the major character, the, you know, the guy who tortures him. And uh, we went through all the kind of major actors at the time, Sean Connery, um, whom I spoke to for ages on the phone. And then he went off and did Never Say Never Again, and did another bottom picture. And then, and then uh, there were others. There was, oh, Rod Steiger. Uh, Rod Steiger, uh, said he wanted to do it, and then we got a call from his agent saying that he just, uh, he, he'd had a, recently had a facelift and it had fallen, um, <laughs> which was kind of weird. And then we called Marlon Brando, and um, Marlon Brando said to my producer, we, we only had a small amount of money, even in those days, which was like $80,000 or something to pay for, pay for the, that character. And his agent just said, uh, Mr. Brando does not get out of bed for less than two million dollars. And um, Simon, my producer, came out with the immortal line, so he, he's given up serious acting then, has he? <laughs> but we didn't, we didn't have Marlon Brando, we went through Alan Bates, we went through an endless number of people, and believe it or not, we were six months, six weeks into shooting the movie, and we still hadn't cast one of the main characters. That would never happen today. But finally, we called Richard Burton because he was had a terrible reputation as a drunk. And although he's a brilliant actor, um, and he was living in Haiti at the time, claiming that he lived there because it was the only place he could go where nobody recognized him. I don't know if that was the real, real reason he was there, but anyway, he was in Haiti. And um, we managed to get him over. And he was a pussycat. He was absolutely lovely. He ignored the fact that he was only the fifth guy we, <laughs> we cast. And um, he was like no other actor I've ever worked with, actually, I have to say. He was, in what sense? In the sense that he had this physical presence, this extraordinary physical presence, which was too big almost for the cinema. So you had to keep taking him down. And he had no real interest or perception, or it didn't appear to have, in the psychology of the character. He just had this magnificent voice, which he, um, he spoke everything. He could read a telephone book and make it sound like a Shakespeare play. It was just something, just this incredible gift that he had. And, and, the, and the only thing that I had to do with him was to, was to keep him from being too present, because his, 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 on the set, you know, this isn't usual, uh, you know, on the set he was very, very charismatic. But, but, um, but later, later, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I just kept him, kept him down, kept him down, kept him down. And I just used to say to him, softer, softer, 